Hey up, it's Steve from that old Yorkshire Geek and it's Andor Day. Uh, we're on episode 11, season 1, episode 11, and this episode is called Daughter of Ferrix. And there's some sad news in this episode, which actually kind of brought a little bit of a tear to my eye because it brought back memories and stuff. But anyway, let's hit the intro and then uh, we'll have a look. Right, I'm back. So, off we go. Let's get the episode up. Let's get the episode up. Where have I put it? <laughs> I move things about and I don't know where I'm putting them. There we go. Right, so, uh, this episode, by the way, is um, there's a little bit of action in it towards the end, and it's really, really good. Uh, but this is more like the, the aftermath of the prison breakout from last from last week. So, right, so let's get on with it, shall we? There's the, um, um, the previously on, uh, this is Andor talking to Marva. Remember, Marva's his mother, like his adoptive mother on Ferrix. Um, that's where he gets his surname. She's Marva Andor. Uh, I didn't realise that, so there you go. Uh, there's Mon Mothma. Uh, we'll learn more about, uh, you know, her financial woes. Uh, he is, um, I forgot his name. This is Sergeant somebody or other. Let's have a look, see if it tells us. Sergeant, 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 Sergeant Linus Mosk. That's uh, who that is. Uh, we meet him again, although briefly in this episode. There he is uh, on Ferrix talking to uh, um, Cyril, Cyril Khan. Khan! <laughs> uh, this is... Um, uh, Dead Ramiro in the ISB. Remember this chap here? Don't ask me his name. Um, he's, he's working for um, 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 Luthan Rail. Uh, this is uh, Bix being um, interrogated by the ISB. Remember they used the torture they're using, the, the dying whales of children from this weird planet that the Empire genocided. Uh, unless he's been been interrogated uh, and broken, basically. Here's the prison break, and all right. Here's uh, we see Saw Guerrero. We meet Saw Guerrero again this episode. Um, remember, Luthan asked him to provide air support for Anto Krieger. Am I getting that right? Something like that. Uh, bright air support for another rebel cell. Remember, I keep saying this every week, there's no rebel alliance yet. There's a rebellion, but there's no rebel alliance. They're all like these disparate groups uh, working separately. And I think uh, Luthan and, and Mon Mothman are, that are, are trying to bring them together to work closely together. But he refused, but then he changes his mind in this episode. Uh, this is the chap um, that uh, works working with uh, Luthan Rail. Uh, it's part of the ISB. Uh, oh, and that's it. And then uh, we cut to the uh, the opening titles. There's e, uh, B2 EMO. Is it B2 EMO? Something like that, isn't it? Uh, and this little fella has, me, has my lip quivering in this episode. He does. Uh, and then we go. Say it every week. Here it comes. The interminable. <laughs> and uh, opening logo. Is it going to come on? It lasts forever. This is playing at normal speed, by the way. Unbelievably slow. But it fills time, doesn't it? That's what it is. It fills time. It's a time filler for Disney+. Plus. That's all they care about. <laughs> it's content. Although it's very slow content. There we go. I've just clicked again. It's still there. Right. So we start off... Uh, I think we're on. Yes, we are. We're on um, Narkina Five, the planet of the uh, the um, floating prison, and we come across uh, Cassian and um, um, oh, I forgot his name now. Melshi, the dangling on the cliff face. See if we can see him. Well, they're, 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 you saw a, a quick glimpse of him there, dangling on the cliff face, and there's obviously search parties out looking for him. We see a, a tie, whatever that is, fly over. Um, and then uh, Cassian says to um, to Melshi that um, 
uh, they're leaving. I don't know how he knows, but he just knows that they're leaving. Uh, we get a look at the, the hands and the feet. Remember, they've got bare, the bare foot, uh, and they're like all got blood stains and stuff on because, you know, they've been climbing a bloody great cliff. Uh, Mel, she's saying he can't feel his hands, he can't hold on much longer, but, you know, they get up there. We know they do because they're in Rogue One, which happens after this. Anyway, great effects in this, by the way. Great landscapes, great ships. Um, anyway, and then we go to, what's this one? Where are we here? Where are we? What's happening here? This is actually really slow, isn't it? <laughs> Something going on. Oh, this is, um, uh, right, we're on uh, FedEx, I think. This is B2 EMO. And there's, we hear voices. And uh, we find out that Marva Andor has passed away. We saw that she was poorly a couple of episodes ago. And then last episode, we found that she wasn't taking the medicine um, because it put her off of food and she'd rather eat than take a, you know, a medicine. And we found out that she's passed away and... B2 is, is sad and he can't, he doesn't really understand what's going on, to be honest. And it did bring a little bit of a tear to my eye because, you know, I lost my mum. Uh, it's three years ago. Yeah, three years ago this month. And um, it brought that all back. So that set me off a little bit. Uh, there he is, little fella. So he do not want to come out, he's, he's unhappy. Uh, and there's all the people there. Don't ask me the names, but all the people that um, uh, that knew, knew Marva. Apparently, she was a high high ranking member of you know Ferric Society. You didn't get that impression, but apparently she was. And one of the daughters of Ferric, whatever that means. But um, they mention it in this episode, and it's the episode title. So obviously, Marva is the daughter of Ferric. Uh, there he is. Uh, so they've been working away. It tells him they're going to bring her out now. So, as I said, it's all very, all very sad. They've been preparing her and stuff of these people. And what they do, we find out later, that um, they cremate you and they put your ashes into bricks or into a brick and write your name on the brick. They put you into a wall, like a memorial wall or whatever. That's what they do on Ferrix. Which is kind of cool, to be honest. It's a nice little memorial, I suppose. Uh, that's what we're seeing happening. They're taking it away. From B2's perspective, his viewpoint. Uh, it's very sad. He doesn't want to leave the house um, for some reason. Anyway, so this is... Um, actually, one from B2's perspective. From this fella's perspective, he's watching from the, this bar... That's where Sinta's working. Remember, she were in on the Aldani raid. Um, one of the few that survived, her and the other one. <laughs> I forgot her name. We see her in this episode. And Andor, there was three of them three that survived. Anyway, so she's keeping an eye on Marva. Uh, but obviously Marva's now passed away. Uh, this fella's an Imperial agent keeping an eye on the, the Andor residence. Right, so we cut back to uh, Narkina 5 and we meet a couple of aliens and I've got to admit, they're bloody awful. <laughs> it's like something straight out of uh, the prequel trilogy. To me, anyway, I didn't like them. I didn't like them. But anyway, so Cassian and uh, Melchior are watching them from, from the top of this, this ridge and they've got a ship, apparently. Um, they've got a, a quad jumper. I don't know what a quad jumper is. I think we saw one in um, Force Awakens. I think that's where they were heading for, weren't they? They were heading for, I think that was a quad jumper that um, Ray and Finn were heading for, and it got blown up, and they went for the you know, garbage instead, which were the Millennium Falcon. Spoilers. Uh, so, anyway, so they're keeping, they're watching these, uh, these two aliens. Uh, they're pottering about doing something or other. But they see that they've, they've got a ship, and that's their way, you know, out of there. And uh, so they make a run for it. But then these aliens here, the press of like, well, like a proximity sensor set off. And um, here we go, we'll see it here. And they get um, Cassian and Mel. She get caught in these these rubbery nets. Yeah, it's going to happen in a minute. There, them aliens look. 
Don't know who they are. Don't they probably got names. Um, they probably I don't know the species either. And you know, it's pretty good. You know, puppets I suppose. You know, whatever animatronics. Um, but the voices are just annoying. Here we go. So that sets off. There you go. It's firing out. Pachum gets them both. So they're caught in nets now. Rubbery nets. Uh, what's happening here? This is um, oh, this is the uh, the Imperial office on Ferrix. This is the officer that was in charge, and he's I think he's getting in touch with uh, Dead Ramiro here. Yes, he is. Uh, telling her all about Marva's Marva's passed away, and you know, they, they wanted permission for a funeral. They want to close you know, Rick's Road for this funeral procession, and and I think the usual thing is the Empire says no. Uh, but D Dedra tells him, yes, do it, but, you know, don't just say yes to everything, you know, add some conditions, you know, as, as though the um, Empire's reluctantly allowing them to go ahead with the uh, funeral that procession for Marva. So, so we can keep an, eye, keep an eye on things. What's they doing here? They're hoping to draw out Cassie and Andor, right? That's what they're hoping to do. They're hoping he goes there, you know, finds out about it, goes there, and that's when they can catch him. So that's what's happening there. Anyway, we're back on Narkeena 5. These two uh, aliens um, are talking amongst themselves. At first they're in their own language and then they start talking in like this broken, so like middle-aged, mid, not middle-aged, middle-ages, like medieval, that's the word I'm looking for, type English, you know, like some weird, weird language. Like I say, it reminds me, it's a bit... A bit um, um, prequel trilogy. It's like something George had come up with. <laughs> um, anyway, they think they're going to kill them uh, because they talk about, you know, there's rewards for escape prisons and stuff the Empire pays. Uh, but they don't like what the Empire's done to the planet. It's the poisoned the water because, you know, that's the Empire, the baddies are out there. They've poisoned the water and I think they've killed the fish and stuff like that. They talk about, I don't know, they can say like wiggly eaglies or something like that or slippy whippies. I think they mean fish. Um, so they're no friends of the Empire. So I think they decide then that they're not going to kill these chaps. They're going to help them. And they give them passage off world. Um, eventually. Um, after after giving them a bit of a scare, one of them gets a big knife out. But um, but they do release and there we go. And they take them away. There we go. The ship powers up. There we go. And it takes off. And it's obviously, it must have a hyperdrive. It doesn't look like it does, does it? But it must have. When they say quad jumper, I was thinking like, you know, sky hopper, something like a, you know, an atmospheric craft, you know, that goes from one place to another on the planet. But no, obviously it's got uh, interplanetary capabilities because it, it takes off and Cassian says, can you take us to that other planet you were captured on? Remember when you were there as a tourist? And he got captured by the shore troopers. He wants them to take them there. So that's what they do. So I presume we give them some money. Um, right, we're here. We're in the. This is Luthen's shop. This is Luthen's assistant doing some uh, restoration work on things, cleaning something up. And um, Vel comes in. <laughs> I always, always get mixed up with the name. It's Vel, isn't it? Not Lev. Yes, Vel. Vel Sartha, there we go. She comes in to the shop. Uh, remember, she is the cousin of uh, Mon Mothma. Uh, she's a Chandrillan cousin of Mon Mothma. And then she comes in, and the assistant is trying to... Because she knows she's being watched, does the assistant. So she's pretending it's a shop and stuff, and she's talking in, you know, what would you like and all that. But Vel's having none of it. She's saying, what's going on and all that. She's wanting to know, you know, what, what what to do next, and the assistant's not really helping much. Uh, but she notices that uh, Luthen's ship, which must be parked right, parked around the back of the shop, has gone. So she knows he's not there. She's asking when he's going to be back, and uh, basically the assistant doesn't know. Um, so that's the end of that, really. Uh, and we see some more. There's more artifacts. There's more like you know Easter eggs in the background. We we'll see in a minute. Um, I'm sure there's other other stuff that you recognise. We've seen uh, one of Padme's hats in the background. I think that's it there. In the, you see it there. 
But we also see a Gungan in a minute. I'm sure all this has meaning as well. That's a bit Aztec, isn't it? It reminds me of Aztec, uh, like calendar wheel or whatever they're called. One of them, isn't it? Or some Aztec crest. I bet I don't land on it. I bet I don't land on a proper... On the, the thing I want to see, I want to show... There we go, in the background there, but you can't see it because uh, I'm an idiot. Let's move this over. There you go. There you go. That's a Gungan shield, isn't it? That'd that, have a force field in, wouldn't it, when they turn it on? Activating the shield! That, all that. They turn on the uh, the four shields, don't they? Uh, there you go. So that's what I, well, I think that's what it is, anyway. Anyway, so she leaves there, you know, not really knowing what's going on, because Luthen's not there. She's not much help. Uh, she's doing everything by the book, or, you know, as safely as possible. And I think Vel's trying to tell her the way beyond that now. The Empire's cottoning on to what's going on after Aldani. So she's got to learn to be more flexible as the assistant. Right, we're back on um, uh, Felix now. Um, what's going on here? Um, I think we're with... Uh, I think we go to... Uh, oh, wow, this is the, the Imperial agent. Watching things... Watching the, the ebb and flow of the situation. Oh, wow, he's talking. He's talking to his, whoever his, his superiors... Uh, telling them that you know he wants things observed and he you know he's going to keep an eye on things. Uh, right, this is um, I don't know his name. It's like a major major character, but I don't know his name, and I can't really look him up because I've no idea. Um, I don't know. I don't know who he is. Is it him? Is it no? That's uh, somebody else. Uh, no, I don't know. I don't know his name, but he's obviously a friend of uh, Cassian and Marv. Um, he's there. We're just looking. I think that was Marv's bed that we were just looking at. And he's, he's, he comes and he tells B2 that his, B2's going to come come with him. B2's charging. He doesn't want to doesn't want to leave. So the other chap says, oh, right, I'll, I'll, he asks if he can stay. And uh, the chap said, all right, one night he'll stay there. So... Another bit of lip quivery stuff from me. Um, I like B2, even though he's a, you know, he's a clunky old dopey robot. Sorry, droid, but uh, you know he's uh, he's endearing. Right, we cut to this is a cell. Good old uh, you know Star Wars Episode Four type uh, uh, cameras that we saw. You know, in on, in the de in, in the Death Star when they were shooting them, Han and Luke and Chewie were shooting all the cameras, weren't they, in the prison. In the cell block, in uh, that's one of them sort of cameras, isn't it? Uh, so I think we're with Bix here. Yeah, there she is. She's obviously she's traumatized from her torture, uh, but they're still wanting information from her. Um, let's have a look. Where are we? Um, and they show her a picture of. Now she's not looking too good, is she? She's not the lovely Bix we know. They showed a picture of... There we go. That's supposed to be Anto Krieger. Um, they're asking if, if he's the one that uh, Bix has been in contact with, that Bix uh, told you know about told Cassie and Andor to go with. Um, uh, but she doesn't answer. Uh, I don't know if she tells him yes or no. I don't know. I presume she says no. I don't know, because we don't know. It cuts away before, before we get that answer. So... They're threatening her, they're saying, you know, if you don't reply, we'll give you back to that doctor that did all this horrible stuff before. But we don't know if she uh, if she tells him. I presume she does, because, you know, people can only take so much. Right, on Coruscant, this is Mon Mothma. Uh, she's watching her daughter going through some sort of, I don't know what it is, but something to do with braids, all these girls. I presume it's some Chandrillan ceremony or whatever. Or ritual, I don't know, but they're going. They've got these braids in the hair, and it's so like doing like a a chant about it. Uh, but she's here with Vel. Uh, remember, Vel's her cousin, and they're talking about uh, Vel, uh, not Vel, Mon Mothma's fiscal worries. Uh, and we learn that she's four hundred thousand credits um, in the red uh, that she's been giving to Luthen. Uh, there's a daughter doing all that stuff. Remember, a family is uh, 
Mon Mothma's family is, uh, they don't know what she's up to. A daughter and a husband. Oh, we presume they don't know. They know she's up to something, but um, I think they think she's having an affair, but, but um, I don't know. You know, it's politics and all that, and it's a political family, isn't it? So they probably get up to all sorts of shady shenanigans. Um, so, and as you see, it's raining on uh, Coruscant for once. Um, so that's where she tells her all about um, the other chap, um, Davos. Is it Davos? Yeah, Davos. The kind of, you know, gangstery type fella that... Uh, He's willing to loan her the money, uh, so that the empire, because apparently the empire will soon be on her, on her back about this this money that's disappeared from her account, and if she don't pay it back, put it back in, you know, they'll be suspicious. Where's it gone? Because uh, she's nothing to show for it, obviously, and um, so he's willing to give her the money or loan her the money to uh, allay the empire's uh, curiosity. But there's a there's a cost he wants his son to marry into Mon Mothma's family. For the prestige of it, make him even make him more powerful. And obviously she's not happy with that because she says he's a thug. You know, it's like one of the it's like one of the Cray twins having one of their kids marrying into, you know, the royal family, I suppose, or something like that. Or uh, marrying, marrying, you know, a, a lord or lady. Anyway, they um, they're worrying about uh, what's going on, and Vel, I think Vel reminds her that um, you know they've got to make sacrifices. Uh, it's not easy what they're doing. They're all they're all in danger. Not just Mon Mothma. She says that you know I helped give you Aldani, you know, because she were there obviously, and um, they're pushing the rebellion forward, and um, it's going to be dangerous. And anyway, she has a little hug with the, the daughter. Uh, and then we cut to Cyril Khan. And his mother goes to his um, his room and says he's got a call. It must be the middle of the night. And this is where he's talking to that sergeant. Oh, pardon me. And the sergeant's back on... Um, oh, I've forgotten the name of the planet now. The planet, original planet where they were from. Because uh, they weren't from Felix. They were on, you know, a corporate... There were corporate security on this other planet, and I forgot what it's called. Sorry, but they were they were from there, and he's working there now. Remember, they were they were fired from their, you know, corporate security jobs. The Empire took over, but he's been given another another job. I think he's working in some sort of smelting factory, and um, somehow he's, there's a a telephone <laughs> in the in the smelting room. I don't know why, but he's he's managed to get a call through to to Cyril Khan. And he's um, he's learned that Marv has died. I don't, uh, he's got uh, contacts inside. You know, he's got friends that are still in the you know, the security forces. And he's learned about Marv's death, and that um, you know Cassie and Mike might go there. Uh, so Cyril's very interested in that. And uh, but they get cut off. All the work starts up again, and it causes interference, cuts them off. So. Then we look, we find out then that uh, well in a bit that um, Cyril he goes to it. I don't know if it's his safe or his mother's safe. I suspect it's his mother's safe. You see, he watches his mum. We'll get to that in a minute anyway. Right, we're back on uh, this other planet. Don't ask me what it's called. I forgot. We see some birds and um, uh, Cassian's. He's on the telephone as well. We've got these phone booths knocking about. In a bit, we're not on that bit yet. It's in the. Um, the place where he was living before, we remember a few episodes ago, before he got arrested, he was shacked up with this young girl. Not young girl, but, you know, a young woman. And um, he's obviously got a, a strong box there that nobody's bothered checking because there's, there's an alien in there now, asleep. Um, looks like um, an alien we've seen before, you know, in Star Wars in the background with some sort of tentacles. You know. um, I think we saw one in Rogue One at the beginning of that. Uh, but that's asleep, so he's sneaking about, and he's got this strong box, and it's got money in it, and it's got blasters in it, and it's got some electronic device. So he takes that and uh, sneaks back out, uh, and then a bit later we see him on the telling bone. There you go, that's his... Uh, it's got all this stuff in it, it's got some credits, you know, blaster, and whatever that is. There you go, sneaks back out, and there's the alien, oh, you can't see it for me, never mind. 
<laughs> right, we're on wherever um, Sagarera's um, camp is. I don't think it's Jeddah. Maybe it is, I don't know, but um, I don't think it is Jeddah. Uh, Luthan's gone to see Sagarera get stopped by two tubes. And now, I'm going to have a bit controversial now. I think Luthan Rail is is either an ex-Jedi or a Jedi that escaped Order 66 or is a Dark Force user. I don't know, but there's something going on with him. That all is not what it seems with him. Right, they've searched him, look, and they've found that. Is that a lightsaber? I don't know. But Luthan says, oh, you know, give me that. He does like a bit of a... A bit of a... Um, I hope they call it Jedi mind trick, you know, copyright. <laughs> Old Jedi mind trick. And he just takes it back off him, you know, he says, oh, I'll give it here, you know. And if it, they knew it were a weapon, they, they wouldn't let him have it, would they? But he just takes it back. Uh, so I don't know if it's a light. It might not be, I don't know, but it looks like one, doesn't it? That shape, anyway. So I don't know what it is. So anyway, there we go, some, some X Wings, yeah. So he goes in to see Saw. And Saw so is now all for helping out um, Anto Krieger and providing his air support. But he wants, you know, he wants loads of money basically and equipment in return. Um, but remember, we found out last week or the week before, we found out that uh, the Empire knows all about the attack. It's, um, oh, I forgot the name of it again. <laughs> it's a power station on, is it Steel House or Sten House or. Stan House, or I can't remember. Somewhere like that. For some reason, it reminded me of the Tannhauser Gate from uh, Blade Runner that I mentioned. But it's there's uh, going to be a, a rebel attack on that power station led by uh, Anto Krieger. Um, but uh, the Empire knows about it now, so they're going to be waiting for him. It's going to be a massacre. And there are, you know, 30, 30 to 50. They said 50 men will die. In this episode, they've said 30 men will die. Um, so um, Luthan basically tells um, Sagrer about that, that um, you know, they're willing to sacrifice those men for the cause, and he, he talks him into it. Uh, Saw's not happy about it. Um, I thought he was going to go. He might go. He might go and help anyway and escape and get injured. Because remember, when we see him in Rogue One, which is not that, you know, it's not that four years or so after this, Saw Guerrero's not in a good way, is he? He's got lots of, you know, robotic, cybernetic parts and stuff, and he? he needs a breathing thing. So I thought maybe he does go to help and gets injured, but escapes. But I don't know. It, it looks like he's not going to, but we'll see. Um, and he suspects then, he suspects that um, Luthan might be part of the ISB himself, he's some sort of spy. Um, but Luthan says... Um, no, he's just got people everywhere. He knows stuff. He's got people everywhere. And then he accuses two tubes of being his spy in Sagarera's cell. And two tubes vehemently denies this. Uh, and it, 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 it like approaches um, Luthan. But then Luthan so like, does a, a swerve and grabs his gun and points it at Sagarera. And um, I say he's, he's very nimble. And I think maybe he used a. Oh, Jedi mind trick, copyright, <laughs> Lucasfilm, 1983. Uh, on uh, two tubes, maybe, I don't know. But um, I'm thinking he's some sort of force user. I am, I do. We'll see again why I think that in a bit. But anyway, he says, I, I'd have killed you. I'd have just let you go and let you die if I were working for the ISB. I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm, you know, this is necessary. So Saw so says, well, okay, then we'll call it war. So... Sometimes you've got to lose a battle to win the war. That's the upshot of it. Right, this is um, Cyril. He's watching his mother going to wherever she's going. She's leaving the house. Uh, so he goes into this safe. I presume it's his mother's safe, or he wouldn't have been sneaking about, would he? So obviously he knows the combination. He goes in. I think he takes some credits out. So I think he's going. He's heading off to... Um, to FedEx, isn't he? That's what I think he's going to do, to try and apprehend Cassian Ando. Right, so we cut to... We're up, oh, no, we don't. We did do. Um, we 
we see um, a Luthan Rail ship. Well, it was there. <laughs> I thought it was. Um, this is his shop, obviously. Can you see anything? I can't see. Nothing rings a bell to me, apart from that um, um, Gungan energy shield. There'll be other stuff, won't there? What's that? I don't know. Is that part of a battle droid? Maybe I don't know. I don't know, but there's one of Padme's hats. So I know where she got her hats from. <laughs> or whatever. I'm sure all this has, uh, has some relevance in the Star Wars universe. Um, anyway, his assistant, don't ask me her name, she's on the blower to uh, Luthan, and um, she's telling telling him that he needs to come back. Uh, that Luthan says, no, he's got... Um, they're talking in code as though it's like he's on a business business trip. So they're talking about customers and items and stuff like that. But uh, Luthan says, no, he's, he's got some other... You know, he's got to go and try and get this this item. I don't know what they're on about. So, but anyway, then uh, an Imperial uh, ship. Some, some, I don't know what it is. It says what, what it is. Uh, and it's such and such class, you know, cruiser or whatever. But it's got all these... Uh, these dishes on, some sort of jamming device. I don't know what the hell they're for. I think we've seen them before, actually, in uh, in like Rebels or, or... Yeah, I think we've seen them in Rebels, one of these. Um, but uh, the contact, they get in touch with the with the Luthan ship. And they're asking for his identification. Uh, Luthan, with the help of his uh, Arthur from Star Chaser um, computer, ship's computer... <laughs> They're like forge an Alderaan, um, um transponder signal, um, but then the uh, the ship gets him in a tractor beam, and uh, he doesn't like that. I don't know why he just don't play along, and then, but um, maybe maybe he knows that they're going to search his ship anyway, and he don't want them to do that. Uh, so they get him in a tractor beam. So he uh, obviously tries to escape from it, and. Um, they scan the ship. Um, he they scan. He scans the imperial ship. Finds out it's a, a level two tractor beam, so they can like, like do such and such to escape from it. Um, but then they put it up to level five, a level five tractor beam. Um, the um, transponder code clears, and they say, "Shall we release him?" And the captain of the ship says, "No, we'll search him anyway." So I think Luthan probably knew that because he's a force user, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so there you got the the he jams the the tractor beam uh, emitters and uh, gets away. Uh, but then he fires instead of like heading off. Oh, they're still the ship's still calculating the uh, jump to uh, hyperspace, so he can't just go. At the moment, remember it takes a few minutes to get the coordinates from the nav computer. Um, anyway, L Luthan uh, fires. He says, "Jam, jam their, you know, signals or whatever." And you think, "Oh, right, press a button. It'll be some sort of radio wave." But no, it just fires loads of stuff at this dish, as we'll see in a minute. And anyway, it fired loads of stuff, and then it all goes. <laughs> now that's jamming, isn't it? <laughs> just destroys this uh, big, this big radar dish. A radio dish there you go destroys it look at the front of their ship um this chap this captain here says um where's my air support so some tie fighters come out a couple of tie fighters and a tie bomber for some reason um as we will see in a moment you can see they've got the uh i don't know the things down the tractor beams down again because they've destroyed that uh, big dish Right, here we go. Right, so let's go back again. Right, there we go. Some tie fighters come out and start shooting at him. So we've got a cool dog fight going on here now. It's obviously a good pilot as well. There we go. Gun comes out the top. Pew, pew. It's ace stuff. There we go. That tie bomber. Don't know why they launched that. Here's med short work of. There we go. Another. Do, 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 do. There we go. It's another one gone. The other one bites the dust, do 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 do. So it comes round. Instead of just shooting the next one, it does this amazing thing that 
it's uh, look, you'll see. <laughs> you'll see. There you go. Flies towards the ship. Flying casual. I thought you were going to destroy that dish, actually, but doesn't it? it just flies past. There we go. Permission to buzz the tower. Permission denied. Maverick should have had a cup of coffee, shouldn't he? Ah, oh, spilt it all down him. <laughs> should this fella or him? Uh, oh, two more TIE fighters. There must have been three. Um, there you go. You see what he does here. Takes out two TIE fighters at once. Are you ready for this? Are you ready? It's going to be amazing. This is on a par when you first see Darth Maul in the uh, Phantom Menace trailer with the twin uh, twin lightsaber. You ready? Here it comes. Are you ready? Oh, what's that there lighting up there? It's all like massive lightsabers. <laughs> massive lightsabers on, the, on these wings. But no, it's they were red. Uh, so that destroys two TIE fighters at once. Because he spun it, that's a good trick, isn't it? That's what every every Sith Lord knows. Spinning's a good trick. <laughs> um, that's Arthur. I know it's not called that. Um, so then they, oh, that's what, that was the computer telling him the hyperspace coordinates were uh, calculated. Then, there you go, off he goes into hyperspace. And that captain's left feeling rather sheepish. And I think that's the end of the episode, I think. I think that's how it uh, fades out. As we'll see on the... He's got some... Uh, he's got some splaining to do. And uh, how... Uh, he called him a pirate. He said he must be a pirate because it would be pirate activity. So they're thinking Luthan's some sort of pirate now. We've made short work of those TIE fighters. Oh, we haven't done yet. I thought we had done. We haven't. Oh, yeah. Yes, I remember now. See um, <clears throat> back on Ferrix and Cassian's calling this chap who we used to work with. Uh, I think he's one of Bix's uh, workmates as well. What's that? The, what, is he playing elite? Oh, you can't see it from my head. Hang on. <laughs> Let me just uh, get rid of me. There you go. Is he, is he playing elite? Hang on. Let's get back on there. There we go. Looks like uh, something from uh, you know that, the, the video game Elite. Doesn't it? You can't really see it, can you? Never mind. I'm waffling. Right, so anyway, Cassian puts a call through to this chap uh, and he tells him, he wants him to get a message to Marva, because remember, Cassian doesn't know she's died. Um, to get a message to Marva. Cassian's at a phone booth on um, that other planet. There he is. But he's not standing in front of it, you notice. He's standing to the side, so... You know, it's just his voice and he keeps telling him not to use his name, but the... The man keeps telling him his name. You know, Cassie and Cass and all that. But he's, he tells him that uh, Marv has died. So so he's not happy. So he's very sad. So then we see Mel, she's there. And they, uh, they split up here now. Cassian gives him a blaster. Uh, they decide they've to go the separate ways and they've got to tell everybody what the Empire's doing. I think everybody knows what the Empire's doing, but... Not many people want to do anything about it. Such is his life in the real world. We all know politicians don't have our best interests at heart, do they? You know, for the most part. But do we do we do anything about it? No, we just moan and do nothing because that's the human nature. Uh, anyway, so they 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 go their separate ways now. They decide to split up, but obviously they come back together again later on because they're in Rogue One together. Um. I think it's a bit sad that they split up now because, because I wanted them to stay together. I wanted them to become a team. I mean, maybe they do quite quickly, but having them going the separate ways, you know, I was hoping they'd be a bit of a team and they'd stay together. But they don't. They go one goes one way, one goes the other, and uh, they uh, they embrace and they shake hands and well, they embrace because uh, they are blood brothers or whatever. And uh, I think that's it then, now, I think, maybe. I don't know, I can't remember. <laughs> Come on. Uh, so what's Cassian going to do now? Is he going to go to Felix? Of course he is. Um, so that'll probably be... Th it's, that's the last episode, by the way, next week, episode 12. So there'll be something going on there. 
he'll, he'll go to Ferrix and they'll try and catch him and there'll be, you know, action and adventure. I hope so, anyway. Because uh, it's been a bit sparse, this series, hasn't it? I mean, there's, yeah, there's been high spots, like we've just seen, a good space battle and the prison break and the Aldani heist. But that's been about it, really, hasn't it? Oh, and the escape when they were on Ferrix in about episode three, wasn't it? But um, that's been about it, hasn't it, in 12 episodes... There he goes, looking at the sun, the, the the horizon, always, always looks to the horizon, just like Luke, never his mind on where he was, <clears throat> what he was doing, <clears throat> except he is thinking about where he is and what he's doing and what he's got to do next. Of course, it's going to end. That is... Sp Stretching it out, out there. I, I know why people call it and bar because it does. It is very stretched out for Star Wars, but I do like it. I do enjoy it. And he goes realizing he's, he's wondering what he's got to do. He's going to go to Felix. He's got to go to Felix, and then I think that's it. And yeah, directed by Benjamin Cannon. So there we go. That's episode eleven done with Daughter of Felix. Obviously, Marvel was oh, press on one. Got rid of myself. <laughs> oh dear. So, yes, a very good episode again. Loved the space battle. Thought that was great. Actually, I'm going to get that back up again as a background. If I can, uh, I bet I can't land on uh, a good bit. Wow, look at that. Cool. See, I've gone too far. With his lightsabers, look. I Me mean, people say, oh, it's just it's just a laser beam that comes out outside. I don't think it is. I think it's lightsabers. Look at that. Spinning it as well. Cool. Cool. Just like Darth Maul's lightsaber, but bigger. That's what I'm thinking. And it's red. That's what I'm thinking. Is he a dark side user? Has he corrupted the crystals in this uh, energy... Um, thing and this big lightsaber thing I don't know it probably won't be that you know I'm I'm, I'm, I'm dreaming <laughs> but this is what best part of the episode obviously um, but it was very good still enjoyed it didn't like the aliens on Narkina 5 they were all right I just didn't like the way they talked but um, you know they can't all talk normally can they I suppose but it was just a bit um, a bit I didn't. I didn't like the the way they talked. Anyway, but whatever. Uh, this served the purpose, um, thankfully. Uh, by the way, we don't know who else escaped. We don't know if Kino Loy escaped. You know, Andy Serkis's character. We don't know. Even he doesn't know. He's given interviews and said he doesn't know if he'll be back. He said he hopes he will, but um, he doesn't know. He'll probably turn up in the next episode, knowing. Knowing uh, Disney, you know, because they keep them to the non-disclosure agreements, do they? So they can't, they can't say anything, even if they could. Uh, but they can't. You know what I mean. Right. So, and what else? Oh, and the um, B2, you know, that was sad. He didn't want to leave, you know, Marva's house. Um, but I think Cassian will come along and... Um, I don't know, though. Will, will he take B2 away with him? He could do, maybe. Could they, could they use B2 to reprogram K2SO in the future? Because apparently, I think K2SO is going to appear in season two. Maybe he'll appear in the season one finale, maybe, I don't know. But apparently he's going to appear in season two, I've heard. So could he use B2 to reprogram K2SO? I don't know. I don't know, I'm dreaming again. I'm dreaming again. Right, we'll leave it there. So a good episode. Um, I didn't give it a score, did I? Um, what will I give this? Because it was quite slow, really. Um, I'll give it an 8. I'll give it an 8 out of 10. Because this made, this made up for it. I'm pointing at my screen there, that. <laughs> that, where is it? There, no, you can't see it there. That made up for the uh, apparent slowness of the episode. Um, it was good, uh, good effects, good tie fight, fight uh, good dog fight. You know. And we learn more about uh, Luthen. Uh, he's got tricks up his sleeve. I think I I think this is something. He's either a, a dark Jedi or a dark force user or a grey Jedi or whatever or 
or he has access to Sith equipment. Um, I don't know. I mean, was it a lightsaber that he had, that two tubes and his cronies tried to take off him and he just took back? I don't know. It looked like one, or it just, or it just like a shock stick, or it just, I don't know what it was. I don't know what it was, but it looked like a lightsaber to me. Um, but anyway, yeah, so 8 out of 10. Um, finale next week, hopefully it's good. It's going to be good, it better be. It better be action-packed. I bet it ain't. <laughs> but anyway, so we'll leave it there. So, wherever you are in the galaxy, look after each other. And until next time, I'll see you.